Hello, my name is Emily Clark. I head up the tax team at Travis Smith, and I would like to welcome you to the eighth episode in our Travelling Seamlessly Global Mobility podcast series. In this series, members of the Travis Smith Global Mobility team will talk to you about the implications of moving your people and operations into and out of different countries, and also look at situations where members of your team may need to work in more than one country. In this eighth episode in the series, Alex and Moji from our Employment and Business Immigration team will be delving a little bit deeper into the UK immigration regime. They will take a look at the more recent additions to the UK visa options available to employers taking on incoming secondees or new hires who require visas. The most appropriate visa route will often depend on the circumstances of the business as well as the individual requiring the visa. The myriad new and updated visa routes in the UK all with different compliance requirements, can be tricky for employers to navigate. Alex and Moji will highlight some of the key elements of the new and updated visa categories, including the new Scale Up visa route aimed at fast-growing businesses, and that launched in August, and the Global Mobility visa route for temporary work assignments. To find out more about the issues discussed in this podcast, the Travis Smith Global Mobility team, and how we can help you with your global mobility projects, you can visit our website, www.traversmith.com, and search for Global Mobility. And now over to Alex and Moji. Hello, I'm Alex Fisher, one of the partners in the Employment and Business Immigration team here at Travis Smith. I'm joined today by Moji Ayedaran, a senior associate in the team who specialises in business immigration. This is the eighth episode in our Travelling Seamlessly Global Mobility podcast series. If you've not listened yet to it, please do check out episode seven in the series, in which Moji and I provided a bit of an overview of the UK immigration regime, focusing on sponsored work visas. Today, in this eighth episode, we'll be taking a slightly more in-depth look at the UK immigration regime, focusing this time on some of the recent changes and alternative routes that should open up new and exciting visa options for employers when looking at temporary transfers or secondments to the UK. There are quite a few different work visa routes within the UK immigration regime, all with their own compliance requirements, so there will often be pros and cons for each route. These route options will have specific requirements both for the employer and for the individual employee to meet in order to qualify. Some routes also feature cap duration or specific work restrictions, which will need to be factored in at the outset. In this episode, Moji and I will walk through some of the key pros and cons of three of the new and recently updated routes. Firstly, we'll look at the new scale up visa route, which just opened in August and is targeted at fast growth businesses. Secondly, we'll look at the graduate visa route and scenarios when this might be the preferred choice. Then lastly, we'll finish off with a look at the global business mobility route, which has replaced the intra-company transfer route. Moji, turning to the new scale up visa route first, this looks interesting and I know some of our tech clients are particularly keen. Can you take us through the key features? That's right, Alex. Uh, This new scale up route has generated lots of interest, particularly from tech sector clients and businesses since it was first announced. Um, The route is specifically designed to benefit fast growing businesses and help them hire the key specialist staff they need. In order to qualify, businesses need to have at least had 20% average growth in the previous three years, and that can be shown by increases to employee numbers or by the business turnover during the relevant period. The business must also have had at least 10 employees at the start of the three year period. So this means that the route is aimed really at businesses at a particular stage in their growth. So not really for startups with less than 10 employees or even long established businesses, which may now be seeing growth at a, at a lower, a slower pace. The the job in question also needs to be a skilled role, so this will need to be assessed with reference to the list of skilled occupations maintained by the UK Visas and Immigration or UKVI. Only job types on the UKVI list will qualify for this visa. 
There's also a minimum salary requirement to be met, as well as an English language requirement, which will mean that the employee must evidence their knowledge of English is at or above the required level. Now they may need to take a specified English test for this, or they can rely on a suitable qualification, such as a degree taught in English. Right, so Moji, assuming all these requirements are met, does the employee simply apply for the visa from their home country or from here in the UK? Or are there steps for the business to take first? Well, Alex, for a first time applicant, they will actually require sponsorship by the UK employer. So this means the employer must first be registered as a sponsor and must hold a license which covers the scale up visa category. They must then assign a certificate of sponsorship to the employee under this route. The employee then uses the certificate of sponsorship to apply for their visa from their home country. Otherwise, if the employee is already in the UK with another work visa type, they should normally be able to apply to move or, or switch to the scale up route to work for an employer who does have the, the sponsor license in the right category. So the license is issued for an initial two year duration, which can be extended for a further three years. Now that all sounds very much like a skilled worker visa process. Uh, as we explored in the previous podcast, the skilled worker route involves the employer holding a sponsor license and then assigning a certificate of sponsorship to the employee for their visa. So what's so different about this route? That's a good point, Alex. The, the certificate of sponsorship or cause fees under this route are significantly lower at £21 than compared to the skilled worker certificate of sponsorship fee, which is £2,199 for a two year visa. The other key difference with this route is that while the route does require sponsorship at the outset, interestingly, the sponsorship only needs to cover the first six months. So after the first six months, uh, the individual can move on to work for another employer in the UK. That is interesting, isn't it? As, as normally with a sponsored work visa, one of the key compliance features is that the visa is tied to a specific job and an individual can't change to a different job type or move to a different employer without applying for a new visa. Yes, that's right. Uh, with this scale up route, the period of being of the employee being tied to the job and the sponsoring employer is limited to this first six months. The individual could then freely move on, taking their visa with them. Now, employers using this route for an initial sponsorship will no doubt want to think about what appropriate retention mechanisms they want to put in place. For example, maybe bonuses or other benefits that apply in after a set period. On the other side of the coin, it does open up opportunities for businesses to hire sought after highly talented individuals who hold scale up visas after their initial six months has passed, as they could come to work from day one for the new employer without needing to be sponsored. As the route has just opened, it'll be really interesting to see how the trend develops over the next year or so, and we can see whether uh, employees choose to move on or whether these scale up sponsors actually succeed in retaining employees longer term. Thanks, Moji. I think that leads neatly to the second visa category we'll be looking at in this episode, so the graduate visa route. Now, this route was recently added and is aimed at UK graduates allowing them to obtain a two year work visa, which is not tied to any employer or role. For PhD students, the duration extends to three years. The individual is able to move jobs without needing sponsorship. The visa process for the graduate visa is fairly straightforward and key requirements are that the individual holds a UK student visa and has completed a degree in the UK. The individual would then be free to work in any role and we've seen this route being used for the new intake to graduate schemes or analyst programs at the new entrant level. There are some cons or drawbacks to this route though. Moji, what are some of the things to think about here? That's right. Um, this route does have a lot of uh, lots of pros in its favour, as you've highlighted there, Alex, but it's also worth bearing in mind the, the sort of potential drawbacks. 
the key one being that this route does not lead to settlement in the UK. So individuals on skilled worker visas can qualify to apply to settle in the UK and stay here permanently after spending five years of continuous residence here. The two years spent on a graduate route, however, doesn't count towards the five years needed to settle. So this does sometimes mean that um, employers are faced with new hires who prefer sponsorship at the outset rather than first applying for the graduate route. The other key drawback we've seen in practice is that a new dependent spouse can't apply to join a graduate visa holder. We've seen this come up for individuals who, for example, plan to, to marry after taking on their first role following graduation. And in that scenario, uh, the employers had to go down the skilled worker visa route instead so that the, the spouse can, can apply to join. The final point on this options for graduates is, is that while the graduate route is aimed at graduates who studied in the UK, the other route that employers want to consider is the high potential individual route, which opened in May this year. So that route caters for overseas graduates who graduated from an eligible university outside the UK. So places like Harvard and MIT in the US and the University of Munich in Germany are on the on the list for for this year. And there is a specific list that needs to be checked for this route. This could be a good option where you have a graduate hire based outside the UK who needs to complete a stint in the UK or if you're hiring or transferring somebody here longer term. Thanks, Moji. Now we have just about enough time left to pick up on the final route we'll be talking about today. So the Global Business and Mobility Senior or Specialist Worker Route. This is a really handy route when looking at visas for secondments and temporary transfers for senior or specialist staff from overseas linked entities. This is a sponsored visa route, so the employer in the UK needs to hold an immigration sponsor license, which covers this visa category. When obtaining their license, employers should always consider adding their linked overseas offices to the license to cover this route. This does involve submitting the right evidence of common ownership and control linking the UK entity and the overseas entity. The role in the UK will also need to meet the skill level required and must also meet minimum salary requirements. So what else should an employer bear in mind when considering this route? Yeah, the other key consideration is the requirement for the employee to have worked for the overseas linked entity outside the UK for at least 12 months. Now, you can get around this requirement if you have a highly paid employee. So if the annual salary is 73,900 or more and the person is recently hired, you can still proceed with this route. It's also worth remembering this route is generally capped at five years, so individuals would need to leave the UK at the end of the five years. However, if you have a highly paid employee, they could stay for up to nine years, but they would not qualify to settle here. So again, if this is a long term or could turn into a long term move, a different visa route should be considered instead, such as the skilled worker route. Thanks, Moji. We'll have to end it there. We hope that's been a useful canter through these new and updated UK visa options. As there are pros and cons to each of the options, it's always important to consider the nuanced requirements at the outset and take advice to ensure a smooth, seamless application. Thanks for listening.